Do you obey what the Lord wants for you in serving Him? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Warren Lamb, clinical psychologist and preacher, narrates, I used to have problems getting my son to clean his room. I would insist that he do it now, and he would always agree to do so, but then he wouldn't follow through, at least not right away. After high school, he joined the Marine Corps, which is where he is now. When he and I were on the plane together, coming home from his leave after boot camp, he said to me, My life makes sense now, Dad. Everything you said and did when I was growing up now makes sense. I really, really understand. Oh yeah, Dad, he added. I learned what now means. Today's readings talk to us about the importance of obedience to God and to our elders when we are asked to serve. Perhaps we may feel inadequate for the work in the kingdom of God. We feel we cannot handle a household or preach in front of a crowd or do a service outside of our own capabilities. But in today's first reading, it is very clear to us what God wants of us to do. He said, now go and lead the people to the place I have told you. Exodus 32:34. We need to get out of our comfort zones because that is where the Lord is present. He is inviting us today to accept the invitation of our church, our renewal community, to serve in whatever capacity we are asked to do so, because it is not us alone who will do the work, but Him. Our refusal to engage others by leading them in a household or speaking about God to multitudes or in serving in a ministry that may seem obscure and inconsequential to our perceived service aspirations is an opportunity for Satan. He lurks around us and his first success is our refusal. The rest will be easy. Just like in a war, disobedience to one's superiors is an invitation for danger and death. Satan enters our mind to fill the gap that we made in not serving God as we are told, by making us anxious, depressed, angry, rebellious, uncouth. He makes us sin because we let Him dominate every minute of our life rather than the Holy Spirit, whom we have shut out by our fears and insecurities to serve, where we are asked to serve. Our refusal speaks of trust issues with the Lord's capability to use us and mold us into His image and likeness and bring others to Him. We may not believe that we are the mustard seed that can grow into a large bush through our efforts that may seem inadequate. But with the Lord blessing it, others are touched, inspired, transformed, even without our knowing. When we do not accept assignments in church or community, we are disobeying our leaders, anointed by God. We are not following the good order with which the Lord desires in the community or parish we have been placed. Our disobedience can impair the holiness that we have been called and the striving that we need to do, and the love we must put on, because we have shunned the opportunity for the Lord to work in us and through the people He will put under us, above us, and with us. In this manner, we are creating our own golden calf to worship because we refuse to die to ourselves and make sacrifices and risk in order to fulfill God's calling for us. In Isaiah 1.19, Obedience begets blessings. It says, If you will only obey me, you will eat the good things the land produces. It may not make sense now, but trust in God's hand working on you. Be a Marine in God's army. Obey now and be saved in the process. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I know I need to make sacrifices in serving you. Grant me the grace to obey and persevere. Open my eyes to the wonders of serving you as I fulfill my calling towards holiness. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.